Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Wargame. Today I'm covering a 1v1. It's a 1v1 ranked game, in fact, and the interesting thing is that uh, it was sent in by uh, the culprit over here. He's fighting against the Masik. He said that both sides made mistakes, and he wants me to focus mostly on red. I think that we're dealing with a very new player here in Red 4, especially considering the choices that he makes. I'll highlight a couple of the things that I see that he could improve upon. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to see the video, but maybe these are mistakes that you recognize from your own gameplay. Anyway, it's a highway to Seoul, long and large map, where, in fact, you don't use most of it. All of this terrain over here, this side of the map, is usually ignored. Unless you really want to go in aggressive with a helicopter push. But even then, you're going to need helicopters which have the range to actually make it all the way from over here to over there. So, 204s are usually out of the question. Now, aside from that, you have the reinforcement zones in Bravo and Fox. These land reinforcement routes can lead to unpredictable unit formations, though. Sometimes you're calling into uh, Charlie, you need new units over here. So, you think, well, my unit's going to come in from Alpha. <coughs> Yeah, no, it's not. It's going to come in from Bravo, which means it's going to come over this long road, through the bridge, and then usually just either moves down here and crosses over the highway, or gets shot up doing that. That's a bit of the problem with this map. It leads to unpredictable results. Now, um, the culprit over here is using what I believe to be... Let me quickly have a look... The Scandinavian general deck. And that's why he spawns in so much infantry and vehicles to support them. One super heavy, a whole bunch of uh, XA 180s, M113 A1s, um, PPV 302s. They started out based on the amount of units that he has over here with a good number of points. Now it is conquest, so killing units in a way is less important than getting terrain. And depending on the type of people that you're playing against, I'd say that capturing terrain and capturing strategic points is more important than actually deploying a command vehicle into them. And what you see happening here is that Damasic is doing it the other way around. He bought three command vehicles, so he has one UAZ over here, which, by the way, is not in cover, it's just dead on the road. One UAZ going to Charlie, one UAZ going to Bravo. Now, yes, this will get you points, but it will also leave you with very few units to defend those sectors that you just captured. Now, to be fair, he might be thinking, well, I'm going to capture Bravo and bring in reinforcements from over there. Um, that would be a, I'd say, a fair assumption, depending on if the enemy is using a lot of helicopters. He's deploying MI-24D with recon infantry over there. One section of two MI-8s going left, two MI-8s going right. Here's the UAZ. And in case you really, really are serious about your AA security, you bring out a Tunguska to defend your main spawn. This is a hell of an expensive unit, as uh, Z Culprit also pointed out to me in the description of the video. And it's not just one, it's two. This guy has already invested 170 points to defend... <coughs> Sorry, my voice is not really too happy today. To defend one UAZ command vehicle, which is out in the open, of all things. Now, at the moment, he has managed to land a few forces. And, of course, Zu Culprit is also moving up with a couple of his own units. So far, just spreading out his units across the map. And if I zoom out a little... Take note of the number of blue 4 units versus the number of red 4 units. They don't need to be terribly effective, but they are definitely numerous. Because we have Jäger over here, a Jupiter to transport them to where they need to go. The Wildcat, the STRV-121, super heavy. Well, that might be a bit of a stretch. Um, let's call it a heavy, <coughs> because it does have a lot of AP, but um, H, no, sorry, armor is a little lacking. Centurion 105s, reconnaissance on the left, even a recon healing over there. Uh, STRV 103C coming in from the right, XA 180. He has a ton of units. Red has 
two sections of VDV, leading up to, to a number of 12, which is rapidly decreasing. A couple of helos, more helos, another section of VDV, and he's finally spawning in one T80. Now, to be fair, you don't need that much firepower if you're just going to be um, going for numerous units, because a T80 could handle pretty much anything that's, for example, in these tree lines, if it can stay at range. The units that I see sorely lacking from Red 4 would be reconnaissance. There seems to be no recon whatsoever. Nothing. Interestingly, Blue has the same issue. The culprit is bringing in a reconnaissance unit over here. Um, he also has the Jaeger on this side. He does have the Kuss Jaeger over here, but these are not recon guys. Um, and over here, I'd argue that you don't really need reconnaissance so much. Because you're going to be quite close to the enemy anyway. So, unfortunately, his Jaeger just went down, but at least he had reconnaissance infantry. And he has one Marine Jaeger all the way over on the left. By the way, I cannot really pronounce Z culprit with a straight face. <laughs> I don't really know how he got the nickname or how he picked it. But I can already <laughs> imagine him going, ah yes, this is Z culprit. And then just deciding, yeah, that makes a good username. I don't know. Z culprit, if you're watching the game, uh, please let me know how you figured on your exact username. Anyway, the helos are making a play. Um, getting shot down by the M113 they ones. These only come with rocket pods, which they already expended. So far, I'm not really sure what they fired at. Might have been the M113s. Although, I think they would have done more damage to that. What Blue is lacking here is AA. And he notices that, so he brings in at least one LVKV-90 and some uh, man pads. For some reason, the Masik moves up Scrajets, and this is where I think the game fucks him over, because he probably tries to bring the Scrajets with the AT weapons all the way over here. Instead of those things coming in from Alpha, they come in all the way from Bravo, and that's when they pass by Dragonair, which did take a shot at them. Unfortunately for the Scrajet and their infantry inside, they missed. But this happens all the time on this map. If you're on this side, make very, very sure, or be very sure where your units are coming from. Because if you're looking the wrong way, if you're focused on this sector, and especially for 10v10s, this can be true, that this sector is your responsibility. You just click, hey, I need infantry here, here, I need a recon unit, and uh, get me another tank. And the game says, sure, we'll bring it in from over here. And as it does so, your units are getting murdered when they're traversing this road. So be very damn careful on this map. Now, another thing that Red 4 seems to be doing quite a bit is stacking his units. A triple stack of VDV-90 is not a good idea. It's 75 points of units, and generally, unless you're using attack move, not all of them will fire at the same time. So, spreading them out and trying to cover more terrain, especially on a sector which is as hard to see as this one, would be preferential over um, just keeping the stacks in bunches of three. The BMD-2, again, it's not a bad unit. These auto cannons can cover quite a bit of terrain, especially if you have them backing up infantry. But as a separate combat unit, if they come across a group of infantry or a centurion, for example, well, these things have two AP, which closes or which improves the closer they get, of course. But a centurion might not care about that that much. I think it'll do damage, but not enough. So here's another unusual play. He's sending an MI-24P all the way over to the left, but an MI-24P has poor optics, it cannot see anything, and there's no reconnaissance unit to spot for him. The recon unit is being brought in, but the MI-24P currently is very, very vulnerable. Now let's have a quick look at what Blue can see. Blue cannot see that much. I'm surprised it cannot see the helicopter with the Marine Jaeger, but that's probably due to the uh, dip in the terrain over here. 
So blue has a large amount of unit coverage. And let's just quickly go over it. Uh, scout, infantry, <coughs> tank, which is being detected. So that's giving him some information. AT, auto cannon to back it up. Two groups of infantry, another group. Um, special forces. STRV-105, more infantry. I'm not... Oh, the Conquerors actually made it all the way over here. I'm quite surprised about that. He does not have a lot of AA. And the one AA unit that he, well, had just got murdered by the M24P. It did do a little bit of damage, but not enough. So that's what Blue has. It's a nice coverage all over the area. And it's going to be hard for Damasic to push into any one area. How about Damasic? VDV-90, again a triple stack, from BMD-2s. Rosvetka, that's the culprit, well, not the culprit. This is, <laughs> sorry, this is the unit that is spotting the STRV-103C. Um, more infantry, no AA to speak of on this side. No recon on this side. The BTR-70 for some reason is sitting all the way over here, deep inside the woods with the infantry inside. No AA. Now, I can already see the comments going, oh my god, this is making my eyes bleed. Well, fuck you. At some point, we were all new to this game, and we all made mistakes similar like this. Um, when I started out with Red Dragon, I... No, sorry, it was not Red Dragon, it was Erland Battle. Uh, but it was a map similar like this. And... In my infinite wisdom, just starting out with the game, I thought, okay, I'm going to treat this like I was taught in Command and & Conquer. So I'm going to just uh, move over here, and I'm going to set up a defensive line of Bravo. And that's pretty much all that I did, because I thought, oh, this is nice high ground, I can see the surrounding area from over here. Um, I might be able to do similar, something similar like that. And within 15 minutes, the AI completely steamrolled me, and I was out of the fight. The AI, of all things, take note. You really have to change your thinking. And Red Dragon is a very complex game. And the more I... I especially noticed this at my job, which I started recently. Um, the longer people are playing something, or uh, working with a certain product, or... Well, the longer they're used to a particular state or a particular way of thinking, the harder it becomes for them to recognize or uh, try to empathize with people who are just starting out. They just can no longer see what people can and cannot think of. So, for you, if you have, let's say... I don't know, 500 games, 1500 hours, I don't care how advanced you are in Red Dragon. But it's going to be increasingly hard to see why the rookie is making choices like this. And why they're wrong. I mean, yeah, of course you can see that they're wrong. Damasic is screwing up all over the place. But for people who are just saying, oh, this is making my eyes bleed, yeah, of course it is. It's Red Dragon-wise, it's poor play. But can you think back to the time when you were a rookie? And people are going to go, yeah, well, I wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah. How do you know that? And uh, to bring it back to my job, the company is working on um, an online learning system. So a video course about their software product. And what I noticed is that um, didactically, the thing is just fucked up. It's just really, really bad. Because the training was developed by people who have been working at the company for two to five years. They are very far removed from the new user who's going to be using the product. They don't know how that person is going to think, and they don't even see what the problem or what the person might not even re uh, recognize or might not understand. The same thing goes for Red Dragon. The same thing goes for The Division. It goes for Stormworks. It goes for whatever the hell you're playing. With, um, and this might sound arrogant, with few exceptions, especially teachers are good at this. And in most respects, I consider myself a teacher more and more. Most people just don't seem to think or don't seem to realize how other people think. 
and how they what the fuck is this um they don't seem to realize how <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay domestic um cvs don't go in the front cvs go in the back other people don't seem to realize how other people think and whenever i'm doing a replay um coverage or a replay commentary i try to Think, okay, what level is this player at? Why are they making the choices that they are? Is it possible that uh, Damasic so far hasn't played too many games? Has he... Um, I don't know. Has he not had helicopter rushes happening to him? Or maybe he had helicopter rushes happen to him. That's why he spotted the... Or that's why he spawned the double Tunguska. Because this... Defending your CV with AA is not a rookie move, but turning them off entirely, even the missile system, is sort of a giveaway. So I'm constantly trying to read the other person and trying to think of, okay, what do they understand and what do they not understand? But getting to that point, that takes time. And that takes a uh, particular, I think, a particular way of questioning everything. Like, okay, um... Do people understand in Red Dragon that a tank in itself is a good unit, but a tank alone is not? How do I best explain that to them? So, if I were to explain this to a rookie player, I'd say, look, a tank is a good unit. However, it's blind. You must think of these guys as, um, as they are, in fact. They're completely hunkered down inside the tank. They do have some periscopes, but aside from that, they don't really see that much. I know that's making things a little bit too easy, but that would be, um, I think, a decent way to explain why a tank alone is not a good choice. And besides, if a tank is blind, then infantry can sneak up on it. So you need to bring infantry to surround the tank or lead a little bit in front of the tank and make sure that they actually get vision. And from that vision, the tank can then say, okay, uh, the infantry has spotted this particular unit, and that's what I'm going to shoot at. That's the way that I always try to explain concepts, not just in Red Dragon, but also in other elements, um, other games, and, well, soon in my job. Because I've seen some weird shit at the new job, <laughs> in that sense. But I'm still in my... Uh, I'm not even sure what the English word is. My trial period, I think. So, if I become too critical, or for some reason, if I want to leave in the first month, I can. So, I'm not sure how wise it is to immediately start um, telling people that they're shit at their job. <laughs> Especially if it's the CEO. Well, not the CEO, but the, uh, the guy running the place. Anyway, um, this is turning into something a whole bit different than Red Dragon at the moment. So let's get back to the game. The command vehicle surprisingly, surprisingly got killed over here by the airstrike. Again, his reconnaissance is very, very limited. It's limited to BMD-2s and VDV, both of which have medium optics. Or actually, the BMD-2 even has poor optics. It's even worse. So he does try to bring in the CV, probably because he sees Z culprit at 189 points with a plus two. He also spawned in another CV, again, coming all the way from over here, it was directed to go here. I think that's rather optimistic, thinking that a unit like that can make it all the way over there. Thinking that the unit from Alpha could make it over there is slightly less uh, unrealistic. I mean, sure, the area is defended, but it's not that heavily defended. Still, sending a CV in before actually clearing out an area is a very, very bad idea. And Z culprit is um, what I think is mm, beautifully called uh, using rent-seeking behavior, meaning that he does not need to push his advantage. He can just sit where he is. He has a plus one. He can bring in another command vehicle over here, and that would put him at a plus two. Even if he does not get the plus two, he is in a far more comfortable place than the enemy. And you see this problem happening all the time in 10v10s, where people are very much in the lead. 
R for example, red 4 is winning. And then red 4 pushes out blue 4 of most sectors. Okay, way to go red 4. Ideally, you wouldn't push too much more. Because you're exposing an increasingly wide front to an increasing or a, um, a, well, a significantly smaller blue 4 defensive line which is harder to defend. So if red 4 in that case would just sit on its ass and not push into the enemy and finish them off and lose a fuck ton of units doing so, then it would be much safer for red 4 to do so. And in this case you can see that Z culprit is doing exactly that. Now I know 10v10 tacticals are usually not conquest, they're usually destruction. This is conquest so in Conquest, especially in this one, it's even easier to just sit and do nothing. In Destruction, that can be... Um, it can happen in Destruction as well, but usually for different reasons. Usually terrains and areas are just completely locked down, and people don't want to lose stuff. But that's a psychological concept called risk aversion, or loss aversion. People don't want to lose stuff. That's not a good position for your command vehicle. Oh, well, he has to, never mind. Um, in this case, rent-seeking behavior, just holding the line, uh, reinforcing it, and not really making a push, aside from getting rid of the uh, VDV over here, I think is the right decision. He has the advantage, just keep it. Sit on your ass, defend it. Well, not the ass, but everything else. And bring in more units to make sure that it's going to be harder for the enemy to push. To be fair, with what he has over here, he could probably roll up the entire Charlie sector. I mean, you can airstrike this. You can hit this with the strv 3 c I'm surprised that these things haven't... Oh, the tree line's in the way. I was going to say they haven't actually fired that much of the conquerors. Holy fuck. This is a special move. I'm going to be kind and call it a special move. This is an air superiority fighter. It is not supposed to be strafing tanks. The tank is probably going, what the fuck was that? So am I, actually. And sure enough, you can have a good laugh at this. Um, I'd say that's fair, because that was a really, really weird move. But again, that goes to show that, um, for me, Damasic needs a little bit more understanding of what planes do what, and why you, would, why you would want to send one plane to do one job and another plane to do another job. For all I know, he's just starting out with strategy games in general. He could be a complete ace in, uh, I don't know, Rainbow Siege, or uh, Rainbow Six Siege, and then you switch him over to a game like this, and he has no idea what I'm doing. Or what he's doing. And the same goes in the other way. Um, if you'd put me in Rainbow Six Siege, I'd have no fucking clue what I'm doing. And I'd be making all the rookie mistakes. So in this situation, sure. Strafing a tank with a fighter jet worth 180 points is not a good idea. I hope that he learned that. And I hope that he understands why it's not a good idea. If not, then um, there's a good chance that he's going to try and repeat that behavior until it works which could um, enforce the whole pattern of oh look this works but at the same time i think that he's going to lose his jet far too often to actually consider it a good idea now he's trying to make a push ish uh the falcon shuts that down and again you can see the importance of his reconnaissance over here what can blue see Interestingly, Blue cannot see any of the units. Now, these Marine Jaeger might look like we're in a good spot, but they really don't see that much from over here. Unfortunately. Because this ridge... Well, this a little less so, but this ridge is just getting in the way. Damasic can still see the strv 103 c Had he sent in an SU-27M, this thing would have been toast. But an SU-27PU is not really the right choice. Now let's speed things along a little bit. Uh, he keeps bringing in tanks. See, the culprit keeps bringing in a mix of units. 
transports with infantry, uh, reconnaissance, AA, tanks. He's just keeping his place defended. Red 4 is still scrambling. And I gotta applaud Damasic for jumping into ranked, but I think he's not quite ready for it. If by some chance you are watching the video, um, take your time and play a couple of 10v10 tacticals. Because with 10v10 tacticals, you really learn how to micromanage your units. And currently, you're not really doing that. You're not really learning the right unit compositions yet. Now there is, um, I believe it's originally from chess. It's, I think it's a lesson called start with the end in mind. So instead of teaching somebody how to play a chess game with the opening moves, you show them the board with the closing moves. So when there are very few units and you get to intimately know those units. The same thing can be applied to Red Dragon. So if you're a newer player, go into a 10v10 tactical or um, even a 1v1 tactical where you very much limit the amount of starting points and the amount of income. And by doing that, you can get intimately familiar with a couple of units, see how they perform, see whether they work for you, see what they do best at. See, for example, this does not work. Um, anyway, see what they do best and then apply that in increasingly large games instead of just trying to throw as many units at a line and see what happens. By the way, I'm going to highlight this. Um, grads, pretty good units, depending on how you use them. 7 HE. But just throwing them at an enemy, just throwing these rounds down range and hope that they do something is not a good idea. Those weapons are supposed to stun the enemy or weaken them. And you can actually see that happening. Dragonair are uh, panicked, these guys are panicked, the transport's panicked, the STRV 103C is calm because it was just outside the splash radius. Automatic is calm. Once you have units which are panicked and or weakened, then you push in. He's not doing that. He's just throwing some artillery at the enemy and hoping that it works. And uh, in the meanwhile, the Masik is just continuously bombing positions where he thinks an MACV can be. And considering that he's not getting punished for it at all, I'd say it's a good move. Because so far, I think he's pretty damn confident there are no enemy AA units in Charlie. Now you can see that Damasic brings in a Tunguska. Again, he turns it off. With a Tunguska, it's enough to just turn the main gun off. The missile can stay active because it's not radar guided. It's infrared. This one is still active, so this one still can be detected by seed and then killed off. Turn off the main gun, so that's the twin 2A38M. Keep the missiles active and uh, use it as a long-range missile defense. And by long-range, I mean against helicopters, because against airplanes, it's really not that good. Alright, so that turned into a bit more of a... Uh, I don't know, a learning experience, a learning curve, or a learning discussion than I initially planned. So, you Culper, thank you for sending in the game, because it allowed me to discuss a few more, I'd say, psychological issues behind learning than actually looking into this particular Red Dragon match. So, you know, it gave me a nice opening over there. Anyway, with that, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think Damasic could do different. Again, I'm going to just immediately delete comments which say, oh my god, he's dreadful. Uh, yeah, we know that. We've established that. But what can he do about it? If you were to give him one thing that he could focus on next match, what should it be? What one element should he be focusing on to improve upon? So don't say, I'm going to uh, bring more AA, bring more tanks, bring more reconnaissance, focus on your infantry. No, one thing. Imagine you're teaching a rookie to play a war game. He gets to learn one new thing. What is it? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you have a good replay of your own, be sure to send it in through the links down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more.